Houston Station on Space to Ground 2. We are ready for the event. Isa and Ozzy, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Thomas Reiter calling from the Foconi. Yes, this is Thomas Reiter calling from the Foconi room in the Vatican. How can you read me? Uh, this is International Space Station. We read you loud and clear. Guys, it's excellent to see you. We are here in the Vatican together with His Holiness Papst Benedict XVI. Um, we are very great to see you, and I hand over now to the uh, head of the Italian Space Agency, Mr. Sargese. Thank you. International Space Station, uh, good morning. This is Enrico Sargese from uh, Rome, Vatican. We are in the presence of His Holiness uh, Pope Benedict XVI. And with me, there is also the Air Space Commander, Air Space Chief of Staff Bernardis, Giuseppe Bernardis. And we are ready to start this historical communication. So, on behalf of you and all of our friends, we thank the Pope of this historical occasion of a connection between the Vatican and the International Space Station. And in order for him to, to know all of you, I would ask the two commanders if they are so kind to introduce themselves and the crew they command, and in particular Dimitri Kontratiev, if you can start with your people, and then Markelli, if you can start introducing your people. Over. Uh, thank you, we copy all, and uh, uh, we'll start with the introduction of the space station crew, and then uh, Mark Hale will inter introduce uh, his crew. Uh, my name is Dmitry Kandratiev, I'm uh, commander of the International Space Station, along with my crew here, uh, with Paolo Nespoli, Italian astronaut, and Katie Coleman, NASA astronaut, and uh, Andrei Borisenko, uh, his Russian cosmonaut, Russian Space Agency, and uh, Alexander Samakutyev, his uh, Russian cosmonaut, and Ron Garen, NASA astronaut. Welcome aboard the space station, Your Holiness. Uh, to my left is Roberto Vittori. Uh, he's an Italian astronaut on a mission for the European Space Agency. Right behind him is Endeavour's pilot, uh, Greg Johnson, and uh, Greg Chamatoff, one of our mission specialists who just did his first spacewalk yesterday. And then Drew Feustel, who's our lead spacewalker for this mission, who's going to do uh, three spacewalks. And next to Drew is Mike Fink, who after this mission will be the American with the most time and space, and uh, won't be a approaching what the Russians have, but uh, a lot of days in space. Uh, welcome aboard, Your Holiness. Thank you, thank you very much for your introduction. Then uh, I'll give the floor to His Holiness, uh, who would like to uh, say a few words uh, for all of us, uh, and uh, maybe some question uh, for some of you. Thank you, over. Dear astronauts, I'm very happy to have this extraordinary opportunity to converse with you during your mission. I'm especially grateful to be able to speak to so many of you as both crews are present on the space situation of this time. Humanity is experiencing a period of extremely rapid progress in the fields of scientific knowledge and technical applications. In a sense, you are our representatives, spearheading humanity's exploration of new spaces and possibilities for our future, going beyond the limitations of our ever, everyday existence. We all admire your courage, as well as the discipline and commitment with which you prepared yourselves for this mission. We are convinced you are inspired by noble ideals and that you intend placing the results of your research and endeavors at the disposal of all humanity and for the common good. This conversation gives me the chance to express my own admiration and appreciation to you and to also collaborate in making your mission possible 
and to add my heartfelt encouragement to bring it to a safe and successful conclusion. But this is a conversation, so I must not be the only one doing the talking. I'm very curious to hear you tell me about your experiences and your reflections. If you don't mind, I would like to ask, to ask you a few questions. First question. From the space situation, you have a very different view of the Earth. You fly over different continents and nations several times a day. I think it must be obvious to you how we all live together on one Earth and how absurd it is that we fight and kill each one. I know that Mark Kelly's wife was a victim of a serious attack and I hope her health continues to improve. When you are contemplating the Earth from up there, so you ever wonder about the way nations and people live together down here, about how science can contribute to the cause of peace? Well, thank you for uh, uh, the kind words, Your Holiness, and thank you for mentioning my wife, Gabby. Um, it's a very good question. We, we, we fly over most of the world and you don't see borders, uh, but at the same time we realize that, that people fight with each other and there's a lot of violence in this world and it's really an unfortunate thing. Usually uh, you know, people fight over many different things. As we're seeing in the Middle East right now, it's somewhat for democracy in certain areas, but usually people fight for resources. Uh, and it's interesting in space uh, you know, on, on Earth, uh, often people fight for energy. Uh, in space, we use solar power and we have fuel cells on the space shuttle, but it's it, on the space station, it, it's, um, you know, the science and the technology that we put into the space station to develop a solar power capability gives us pretty much unlimited amount of energy. And if those technologies could be adapted more on Earth, we could possibly reduce some of that violence. My second question. One of the themes you often return to in my discourses concerns the responsibility we all have towards the future of our planet. I recall the serious risks facing the environment and the survival of future generations. Scientists tell us we have to be careful, and from an ethical point of view, we must develop our conscience as well. From your extraordinary observation point, how do you see the situation on Earth? Do you see signs of phenomena to which we need to be more attentive? Well, Your Holiness, it's a, it's a great honor to speak with you, and you're right, it really is a, an extraordinary vantage point we have up here. On the one hand, we could see how indescribably beautiful the planet that we have been given is, but on the other hand, we can really clearly see how fragile it is. Now, just the atmosphere, for instance, the atmosphere, when viewed from space, is paper thin. And to think that this paper thin layer is all that separates every living thing uh, from the vacuum of space and all that protects us is really a sobering thought. And, you know, it's, it seems to us that it's, it's just incredible to, to view the Earth hanging in the blackness of space and to think that, you know, we are all on this together, riding through this beautiful, fragile oasis through the universe. And it really fills us with a lot of hope to think that, you know, all of us on board this incredible orbiting space station that has, was built by the many nations of our international partnership, you know, to accomplish this tremendous feat in orbit, I think, you know, that just shows that by working together and, and by cooperating, you know, we could overcome many of the problems that face our planet. We can uh, solve many of the challenges that face the inhabitants of our planet. It really is a wonderful place to live and work, and it's a wonderful place to view our beautiful Earth. My third question, the experience you are having right now is both extraordinary and very important, even if you must come back down to earth like all the rest of us. When you do return, you will be much admired and treated like heroes who speak and act with authority. You will be asked to talk about your experiences. What will be the most important messages you would like to convey to young people especially who we live in a world strongly influenced
by your experiences and discoveries. Your Holiness, as my colleagues have, uh, have indicated, uh, we can look down and see our beautiful planet Earth that God has made, and it is the most beautiful planet in the whole solar system. However, if we look up, we can see the rest of the universe, and the rest of the universe is out there for us to go explore. And the International Space Station is just one symbol, one example of what human beings can do when we work together constructively. So our message, I think, uh, one of our many messages, but I think one of our most important messages is to uh, let the children of the planet know, the young people know, that there's a whole universe for us to go explore. And when we w do it together, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish. My first question, space exploration is a fascinating scientific adventure. I know that you have been installing new equipment to further scientific research and the study of radiation coming from outer space. But I think it is also an adventure of the human spirit, a powerful stimulus to reflect on the origins and on the destiny of the universe and humanity. Believers often look up at the limitless heavens and meditating on the creature of it all, they are struck by the mystery of his greatness. That is why the medal I gave Robert as a sign of my own participation in your mission represents the creation of man, as painted by Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. In the midst of your intense work and research, do you ever stop and reflect like this, perhaps even to say a prayer to the creature? Or will it be easier for you to think about these things once you have returned to Earth? working as an astronaut is extremely intense. But uh, we do have an opportunity at night to stop. Your Holiness, to live on board of the International Space Station, to work as an astronaut on the shuttle Soyuz or the station is extremely intense. But uh, we all have an opportunity when the nights come to look out and uh, more to look down on Earth. Our planet, the blue planet, is beautiful. Blue is the color of our planet. Blue is the color of the sky. Blue is also the color of the Italian Air Force, the organization that uh, gave me the opportunity to then join the Italian Space Agency, the European Space Agency. When we have a moment to look down Beauty is the three-dimensional effect of the beauty of the planet uh, is uh, capturing our art, art, is capturing my art. And I do pray. I do pray for, for me, for our families, for our future. I took with me the coin and uh, I allowed this coin to float in front of me to demonstrate microgravity. I shall thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, I would like to allow this coin to float to my friend and colleague Paolo. He will make return on Earth, on the Soyuz. I brought it with me to space and uh, it will take down on Earth to then give back to you. My last question is for Paolo. Dear Paolo, I know that a few days ago, a few days ago, your mom has left you, and in a few days you will come back home. And you will not find her waiting for you. We're all close to you. Me too. I have prayed for her. How, how have you been living through this time of pain on the International Space Station? Do you feel isolated and alone, or do you feel united amongst ourselves in a community that follows you with attention and affection? Santo Padre, 
Holy Father, I felt your prayers and everyone's prayers arriving up here. We're outside the world, we orbit outside the earth, and we have a vantage point to look at the earth, and we feel everything around us. My colleagues on board the station, Dimitri, Katie, Ron, Alexander, and Andre, were very close to me at this important time for me. A very intense moment, as well as my brothers and sisters, my uncles, my aunts, my relatives were close to my mom in her last moments. I'm very grateful for this. I felt very far, but also very close. And the thought of feeling all of you near me at this time has been a great relief. I also want to thank the uh, Italian and American space agencies that have given me the opportunity so that I was able to speak with her in her last moments. Dear astronauts, I thank you warmly for this wonderful opportunity to meet and dialogue with you. You have helped me and many other people to reflect together on important issues that regards the future of humanity. I wish you the very best for your work and for the success of your great mission at the service of science, international collaboration, authentic progress, and for peace in the world. I will continue to follow you in my thoughts and prayers, and I will impart my apostolic blessing. And we all um, would like to thank you, Your Holiness, uh, for your kind, for your kind words. Have a nice and uh, happy continuation of the work you have done. Thank you very much. Bye. ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event in Vatican City. Thank you. Thank you, Isa and Asi in the Vatican City, ISS. We are now resuming operational audio communications. Copy. Thank you, Lucia. Thanks, all of you. Thanks, all of you. That again was the 12 members of the combined STS-134 and Expedition 27 crew talking with uh, Pope Benedict XVI from the Vatican. All 12 members, including uh, Commander Mark Kelly and Pilot Greg Johnson, as well as uh, Mission Specialist Mike Fink and Drew Foistel, Greg Shamatoff, and Italian Mission Specialist Roberto Vittori. And on the Expedition 27 crew side, Commander Dmitry Kondrachev and uh, Flight Engineers Katie Coleman, Andre Borisenko, Alexander Semakutiaev, Ron Guerin, and Italian Flight Engineer Paolo Nespoli. <laughs>